some alternate ways to rig for um, what could be a confined space, uh, but a place where our access is elevated um, and there's not much space to work from up top. You really don't have the height we need to actually get somebody out potentially from head to foot all the way up and then vector them off that platform down to the ground. So it needs to be really high. Um, aerial ladder, if we can get in, is probably the go-to. It's the easiest thing. Um, but an alternate way to do this uh, is with your long 35-foot ground ladders. So let's take a look at the pre-rigging real quick. Let me give it to me. Okay, so the securing of uh, the ground ladders, not all ground ladders are the same. And we had a challenge here because these, these, these little brackets kind of get in the way of our ability to kind of marry them, marry them up well. So images you see in books about securing two ground ladders together in an A-frame, uh, it's just one way to do it depending on the type of ground ladder. Here, what we decided to do was a set of uh, a set of square lashing, square lashing here, separate webbing, square lashing, and then lash and frapped again on the rungs. So again, each rung working load is about 700 pounds. We're pretty much doubling that. Um, and we're gonna pre-rig our, we're pre-rigging our two tension rope system, main and belay, whatever you wanna call it. Our ropes are pre-plumbed into the directional because this is going to be very high and we aren't going to be able to do anything with this once we raise it up. Also, we're pre-plumbing our, our guy lines, our lateral guy lines. So the midpoint of our 200 foot rope is right here. And then we just jump. This is our jumper uh, to uh, one guy laterally and then a mirror image of that with another guy laterally down here. Uh, it's a coordinated effort. 35 foot ground ladders are pretty heavy, so we're going to have Probably three people on each side lifting up maybe one person for the uh the pat the guy line and then we're just going to take in uh get it vertical um and our guy lines are going to be under a loose tension maybe hand taut and then we're going to stake down our two ladders our a-frame uh with pickets and then once we do that we're going to really tighten down on those guy lines and make our frame really nice and secure um once we get it up, we may consider lateral bracing, maybe this whole LD uh, ratio concept that you, you may be familiar with in structural collapse, shoring applications. The, the ladder is going to be really high. 35 foot ground ladders, the highest you can extend those out is probably 34 feet. And so we're by default going to like shoot like for the stars with 34 feet. So you can do trigonometry on this and try to figure out uh, like, okay, well, how far away from the, the space uh, horizontally do we need to position ourselves and luckily you carry around your handheld uh, little computer devices and you can figure it out you just type in like a trigonometry calculator on your phone you just if you know like the angles we want we want somewhere in the 60 to 70 degree angle for like an a-frame that's kind of ideal I mean 45 is pretty flat and then like 80 is pretty steep so like let's just say 65 degrees. So if we go 65 degrees and we max out our ladder at 34 feet, you plug in those numbers, it'll tell you that the max height you can get on that A-frame from where you picket it at the base is probably right around 30 feet max height. And then how far away from the center of that frame that's right over the hole over do you have to go? The calculator will tell you, okay, it's about 14 feet. So you come out here with a tape measure, measure out 14 feet centered, and then you just throw a marker and say, okay, this is where our feet are gonna be when we kind of set our ground ladder up. Because these things are heavy, we wanna get that nailed down as close as possible right from the get-go. This thing was a pain in the butt to try to erect with just seven people. So really, like you need like double that. So maybe a crew of 14, really to get this thing right into position where you want it both uh, in both planes. So let's take a look at the guy lines. Really good guy angles, uh, left and right. Um, so we want, again, just like uh, your guying principles, this is the plane. We want it, we want these guys to be um, 45 ideal, 45 to 50 ideal, minimum 30. And this looks more like it's over uh, 50. So these guy planes are perfect. So we're really happy with that. Our space is, really right there so our frame is centered right over the space which is awesome so our frame looks pretty good it's not perfect um i wanted that like 60 to 70 degree angle and yeah that give or take ballpark it might be a little bit less than 60 but all things considered it's pretty good uh frame looks good this way frame looks good coming back this way along with the guy we did live safety rope 200 feet 
just basic stuff, ID, now I'm working three to one back tie uh, on both sides. We can choose on the fly how we want to operate these. So we can do two tension rope system or we can do a single main, single belay on the fly instantaneously. It's just a matter of who's in charge and how the operators want to run that. So now how do we belay for something like this? Well, what are we really belaying or protecting against? Uh, so a two rope system and they're both, th they have to go through a high point somewhere and they're both going to be going through the, the frame. So if we're operating a two rope system and we're trying to protect things and belay things, now I got to think critically of well, what are we truly belaying? We're belaying for any human error or any failure of any component of the rope system. So that includes uh, some sort of uh, sling to anchor to a carabiner or a pulley, the rope itself. Uh, the critical point in all this is the actual high point itself because there's no belay if that thing fails. We're just gonna deem that bomb proof and that's the one thing where we're just hoping that we did it right. Um, we're pretty confident that that's not gonna go anywhere. Um, there's no point in blaying anywhere below that because we're gonna have to hoist our patient all the way up pretty much almost as high as that high directional if he's straight vertical to swing him out and lower him to the ground. The opposite side or the far side. So let's see what we have going on here. Our main lines, our anchor's way out there going underneath the tank to a butt block. That's gonna keep our resultants in check. And then our lines are coming up and then down. So it's a loaded line coming up through the high point, resultant going down kind of this way. Tension line running along the one side of the frame, bending over, resultant going this way. So we're lashed down here to prevent any movement and then straight out to our uh, main line, our main system operation, lower and all. Um, so this is called a butt block. Oh. Okay, so hey, Stop. keep his feet over towards JP. All right, and we're gonna vector him out, right? Yep. Down. <laughs> Down, down. On the ground, slack all lines. Victim on the ground, okay, slack let's keep all you lines. standing up. Okay, so this was just an alternate way to do it. Not the way, a way. Takes more people to manhandle these uh, 35 foot ladders. Um, so yeah, just a different way to kind of get some sort of high point rigged in some unconventional manner. There you go.